Hey everyone, Rogold here. Today we've got a bit of a supersized third video in the Predictions Mark series where we speculate on different aspects of Division 2 leading up to the DZ reveal in December. And so, being as we're drawing closer to the end of November, I thought it was time to delve into everything PvP. Additionally, there's no info on what the upcoming dev blog on the 29th will pertain to, so just in case it's related to the DZ reveal or PvP in general, though I doubt it would be, might as well give my predictions out now. Our topics for today are PvP dynamics, builds and weapons in PvP, and the DZ slash PvP modes. Let's get right into it. So, PvP dynamics. When I say that, I'm really just referring to how PvP will be at its core. Will it be face tanking? Will it be cover based? What kind of methods will we need to adapt to in order to compete? For context, Division 1 really revolves around using cover wisely. By this I mean standing behind cover objects to block fire, not bunkering into cover. Being able to use movesets to your advantage by circling people, strafing, running in and out of sightlines, having a good build, and having situational awareness. Now, from what we've seen of Division 2, it's pretty clear that we're going to need to use actual cover, as in pressing whatever button to go into cover a whole lot more. This is because of two big reasons. One, because the game is designed a lot more around lethality. Both our agents and the enemies are much squishier, and face tanking people in either PvP or PvE will assuredly remind you of that. The second reason is the environment. In New York, there was always an alcove to stand in to block line of sight to use instead of actual cover, there were dumpsters to hide behind a multitude of things. And while I'm not saying these things won't be absent from Division 2 entirely, the environment is much more wide open, and using the crafted cover in which you will crouch down will be much more mandatory simply because there won't be as much standing cover to hide behind. Wherever there is standing cover, I'm sure that it will be used, and it should achieve the same goal of a cover-based experience, since it will be much squishier regardless. While a bit of a more slower PvP experience seems like it could be ideal, and strategy will be much more needed, there's one thing that I really hope doesn't happen, and that's prolonged fights where no one sticks their heads up and no one can push because it'll be mowed down as soon as you step out of cover. As a counter to this, I really, really hope that Division 2 utilizes the mastery of mobility. Similar to Division 1, how mastering strafing and circling people was the key to victory, I really want the solution to being squishy to be that if you've mastered traversing your environment and being as efficient and nimble as possible, you won't get hit, and that'll allow you to close the gap on a stationary player and take them out. Division has a great parkour system to allow traversal over and around objects, but it's rarely used since face tanking is the name of the game. But in Division 2, if they can make the new hood slide feature and vaulting over objects a viable way to gain ground on someone without being hit, it could be a very masterful and entertaining experience. So, to recap, in an ideal world, I would love if Division 2 PvP was focused around cover, mobility, your build, and situational awareness. That would be awesome. Moving on to builds and weapons, one of my favorite things about the Division is how much variety there is in how you can build your character before stepping into the DZ or a PvP mode. In Division 2, a lot of people were slash are worried about the lessening of build options and variety with the introductions of specializations, but from what I've observed myself and heard from the developers, I can definitively say, at least from what I've seen, that that's not the case. The devs have said that the RPG aspect has been deepened and that specializations don't act as classes as many as feared, Rather, they go on top of your personal build as extra customization and progression. Specializations, along with the new feature of high-end armor having two talents, should add immensely to the build diversity and possibility. As it pertains to PvP, I just really hope that everything is balanced this time around. I talked about gear sets in my other predictions mark video with armor, and in that I suggested a method of balancing gear sets where you must meet stat requirements similar to the new talents in order to unlock the gear set bonuses. And if something like this were implemented and they can make high intelligence actually useful, I truly believe that we can get balance, or at least as close to balance as you can get, and it can be achieved. It's going to take a lot of hard work and focus from the developers to make sure it's this way at launch, and to make sure it stays that way when they add new stuff, but I really do think this is possible. And if they do pull it off, it'll add a whole lot of interest to the PvP scene, in the sense that people won't feel like they need a specific set to compete, and it should improve the entire game because of it. Making different builds to find your ideal playstyle is the core of the division, and one of my favorite things about the game, so let's hope they nail it. As for weapons, I don't have much to say than other than how I'm very excited to see what new weapons they bring in, and I really hope that weapons can be balanced this time around as well. When you think about it, as players we've pretty much accepted the unbalance of weapons in Division 1. You never see posts petitioning for weapons to be buffed or nerfed, because the devs have proven time and time again that they just can't get that bit right in Division 1. So let's hope that from launch, each weapon class and weapon itself has a place, a use, and a purpose. A totally diverse weapon scene would be something really incredible that we haven't ever really seen in Division before, save for perhaps the 1.6 era, 
but even that wasn't as balanced as it should be. Additionally, I'm very hyped for exotic weapons. I'm very interested to see what kind of exotic talents they can come up with that'll fit the realistic setting for Division. I just really hope that they're powerful and viable and feel that way in PvP. Lastly, we've got the DZ and PvP modes. We really have no info in either of these things, so this is widely just going to be what I'd like to see from them. As for the DZ, I made a DZ Theorio video a while back that I'll link below that has some evidence behind it, but for this I'll more so just say what I'd like to see rather than that where I went off of some information. So, a fellow Division YouTuber by the name of Epic Slayers recently put out a video where he dug up a clip from E3 where Skillup and Erics were playing the Division 2 demo, and Skillup says that apparently the DZ has more activities now and more ways to go rogue other than just shooting someone or cutting a rope. I'll link that video down below. Now, as to whether or not that claim is true or not, I'm not sure. I don't know why any dev would tell him that information, especially given how long ago that was, so we'll see if that turns out to be true or not next month. If it were true, it would be cool, I suppose? The one upside I thought about is that it would definitely warrant the return of friendly fire since the chances of someone getting shot in the back for someone else to go rogue would be lowered since there would be more ways to go rogue than just that. Now, regardless of whether Skillup's claim is true or not, friendly fire must be something that comes back in my eye in order for the division to succeed in Division 2. As long as PvE players have actual content to farm outside of the DZ, then I see no reason as to why friendly fire couldn't come back since I advocated that change the most. As for the rest of Rogue 2.0, another system that can make a return is the idiotic, yes, idiotic system where if you tag Rogue in Zone 9, your teammate in Zone 1 goes Rogue as well. I don't bash on stuff that often in this game, but for the life of me, I don't know why this is a thing. What benefit does it provide? I completely understand and support the system where you match the timer of your teammates with when you get within a close proximity, but from 8 zones away from each other? It serves no purpose other than to make you hate your friend who tags you from across the map when they're off doing their own thing. The third and final thing about Rogue 2.0 that needs to change if it's brought over to Division 2 is the mana system. I'm a big fan of an objective based method to clear your mana stats rather than just a timer, however I'm not a fan of the objective that we have now. I've come up with an alternative system that would play out when you reach mana status, so here it is. Assuming we still have zones 1 through 6 inside the DZ or something like that, each zone would have 2 to 3 quote unquote clear areas, which would be small areas maybe the size of the construction site down in DZ2 on the east side and these would be areas where you can clear your mana. So, you get mana, you have no timer, you must proceed to a clear zone. The difference from 2.0 is you can go to any clear zone in the DC that you want. However, each of your team members must be in the zone for the status to be clear. Upon all members arriving in the clear zone, you get a 5 minute timer, just like Division 1. Like Row 1.0, if the manas get shot or shoot friendly agents, the timer is paused. If your team leaves the clear zone before the timer expires, it disappears and you have to re-enter the zone to begin the timer again, starting at 5 minutes. I think this system could work really well. The timer allows for the rogue team to go to any zone they wish to clear, and since their team doesn't clear it instantly, it allows for friendly agents to catch up to wherever the rogues go and have a chance to take them out. Additionally, these clear zones could be used exclusively for the manhunt clear purpose, and the devs could specifically design them for attack defend purposes with places to hold out for the rogues and flank routes for friendly agents to advance to, all of this being worlds better than the Rogue 2.0 clear stations, which were simply reused last stand terminals, many of them within landmarks. I floated this idea to Terry Spear on Twitter, who's the creative lead at Redstorm, the studio that handles a lot of PvP stuff, and he gave the comment a like, so who knows, maybe some of it will come to pass. I think it would work quite well, and be a lot more fair for both sides of people engaging in a mana fight. As for what completely new mechanics or systems could be in the DZ, it's pretty impossible to say what we might see, but I think that any activities that bring people to one location would be great. I think that the intention with supply drops was that, but there were too many of them and they didn't give good enough loot, so it didn't quite work out. If, for example, you had one mega supply drop that landed in one spot guaranteeing good loot, and 12 players show up, and you have NPCs and a boss, that would be an insane event. You'd have a massive amount of fighting, people going rogue left and right trying to outlast everyone else for the drop. It would be epic. Let's hope that some fresh and beneficial innovations have been made and that they work out well. As for PvP modes, it's pretty much confirmed that there will be some at launch, considering that on their website, PvP modes are listed as an endgame draw. Before I delve into what modes I think there will be, I want to address something that needs to change for the entirety of PvP modes, and that's the maps. We need custom made PvP maps, whether that means parts of the DZ are constructed with the thought of the area being used as a PvP map, or whole new maps slash areas from scratch. The maps need to be condensed to fix the running issues from last stand, and they need to be made thoughtfully with flank routes, choke points, and all that stuff in mind, so it can be a truly fair sandbox. So, what kind of modes do I think we'll see? 
three come to mind, but I hope we'll have a good variety to choose from at launch. The first mode I'd like to see is a refined last stand type mode, basically just domination. Last stand was a good first mode for the division, and to this day it's a hell of a lot better than skirmish, but it has quite a few issues. If they brought it back, I would love to see a big overhaul. I think three big things would need to change. First, the map sizes. I just touched on that so I don't really need to go into detail, but having smaller maps with less travel time to each zone would do wonders. Second, they need to address the home spawn issues. One person on the other team traveling to your home spawn can mess up the whole game up, since you either have to do a two minute run to get back there or die and respawn there so your team can stay in the fight at B. I think they should ditch the home spawns altogether and have each team spawn equidistant to B and either A and C, and then from there A, B, and C are all triangulated so that there's no home spawns or a middle point, and moving throughout the whole map and trying to hold zones is much easier and makes more sense. Lastly, I think an overhaul featuring smaller maps and no more home spawns would warrant either only a singular station at each zone to capture, or two to three stations with quicker capture times. Thinking about it now, having two stations with halved capture times of what we have now seems like it would be a lot better. This mode would still work 8v8 I'd imagine, even with smaller map sizes, or they could go 6v6 if necessary. Alright, moving on from Domination, I think we'll definitely get a team deathmatch mode like Skirmish, hopefully with a few changes. The main one again being custom maps. Skirmish was a bit closer to having custom maps since the devs designed those areas for Skirmish and Resistance only, but like I said, we really need maps with flank group, sniper nests, and all the works. Along with that, I think TDM and the Division could do with a kill increase, maybe into 50 for the win. Accompanying this would be a player increase to either 6v6 or 8v8. I think that these changes wouldn't increase the time it takes to play a TDM match drastically, and it could add some scale and excitement to a mode that could grow a bit too boring if it stayed 4v4 and everyone sat in cover. Okay, the last mode on my list is something that I think could really fit well into the Division universe, and that would be a mode similar to Rush from Battlefield. Before I go on, shout out to my friend who I play with all the time, he brought up this idea to me, and I 100% agree with him. If you're unfamiliar, in Battlefield, Rush is a large scale mode where the attacking team has to capture point A and B before the playable area extends for them further, and they can go on to capture the next two points C and D. The defenders are trying to stop them from doing so. If the attackers make it through and capture all five checkpoints, for example, they win. To put it into Division's context, imagine the attackers start at the very bottom of DZ1, and the two extraction points are zone A and B, except ideally the points would be a bit closer together, and then the attacking team must split their forces to go and capture a last stand terminal-esque point at each zone. The defenders have to split up as well, and fighting ensues. Let's say the attackers manage to capture both zones, their respawns and time clock given to finish the objective get replenished, and now zone C and D are active in zone 2 at the extraction and library respectively. This continues all the way into zone 4 or 5, upon which the final zones can be captured for the attackers to claim victory. The way the defenders win is by holding any of the zones until the time runs out, or they deplete the attacker's respawns, however the devs would choose to set it up. I feel like this could be a really awesome, massive scale mode that wouldn't have to be tailored with a specific map. I think the example of the DZ I just gave would work quite well with minimal things that would need to be coded extra. This could probably warrant a 12v12 player count, or even 16v16, or 24v24. It could truly be a large scale strategic mode that could fit perfectly into the more lethal and cover based dynamic of Division 2 PvP. Alright everyone, those are the topics we have for today. I know that was quite a lot. I really just wanted to get all of my thoughts out regarding PvP before whatever is going to happen on Thursday and or in December. I'm not sure if I'll do a fourth predictions mark video. I covered the big topics that I wanted to, but if there are any additional ones that you want to hear about, be sure and leave them in the comments below and I will cover them in an upcoming video for sure. The next time you hear from me will most likely be after the dev vlog on Thursday, that's the 29th for anyone who didn't know, so be sure to keep an eye out for that, but you can be sure that I'll have a video up on it as soon as I can, going over whatever they decide to release, as long as it's not as bad as the last one was, though I'm pretty sure you can only go up from there. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, leave a comment with any questions or additional topics. If you're new or you want to keep up to date with everything Division 2 and have some sweet Division 1 content mixed in, be sure to subscribe. And until the next one guys, Rogue Gold, out.